The life cycle of plants really becomes an important part to understand when we're looking at genetics and everything else and the way things grow. And in the life cycle of plants, what we need to be able to differentiate is basically what we call the sporophyte versus the gametophyte. If you look at the words, phyte refers to plant, gameto refers to plant which produces gametes, sporo refers to the plant which produces the vegetative cells or the um, spores, if you will, on this. So here we've, we're going to have a very interesting look at the major types of plants in here. It says the spore pot sporophyte is the part of the plant that reproduces from spores or vegetatively. When we look at the sporophyte, we're talking about something that's diploid. And since it is diploid in nature, it tends to be the dominant part, so we would think. But we're going to look at these quite differently. Um, this shows you a sporophyte of a plant. This is, hey, you're looking at that going, wait a second, that's a tree. Yes, that is a tree. But if we're looking at the sporophyte gametophyte part, that's a sporophyte. We've got this. You say that's leaves. Yes, but it's also the sporophyte. It's the vegetative part. It's not the reproductive part of the plant. So it is the sporophyte. That's a sporophyte. And you say, well, that's a plant. Yes, that's the plant. And when we're dealing with higher plants, the sporophyte is actually the plant itself that we see. If we look at the gametophyte, it says the gametophyte is that part of the plant that produces gametes. Therefore, the gametes are haploid. The gametophyte could be male. It could be female. It could be combined. All right, now let's take a look at some gametophytes. Say, wait a second, that looks like pine cones that are starting to put out pollen. Yes, you see these in the beginning of the year because they turn your car yellow during the springtime from all the pollen it comes out. They are producing the male gametes, which are the pollen. These are the female gametes. These are the pine cones. These are little itty bitty baby pine cones before the pine cones ever get fertilized and start growing. This is a gametophyte. You say, wait a second, that's a flower. Yes, that is a flower of the passion fruit. And it has got the male parts in it, and it's got the female parts in it. And you've already seen that in the, in the flower part. But yes, this is a gametophyte. It is the part that produces the gametes. So when we look at these, and we're going to look at these in several different groups of plants, we're going to see differences in what we get. Now, when we look at plants, and when you get into the part on plants, one of the first things we do is we teach you the difference between the four major groups of plants, which include the non-vascular, the seedless vascular, the gymnosperms, and the angiosperms. So we've got to look at each one of these little parts and see what we're actually getting out of that particular part. Now, this, we're going to start out with the non-vascular plants. These are plants that live in moist environments and everything. We normally see them as moss, and that is what moss looks like as moss grows. And it just goes around. It is the gametophyte. It is actually haploid in nature. And that's what we see. The gametophyte eventually goes and produces this part, which raises up quite a bit above the remainder. And this part is actually diploid. So this part is the sporophyte. And this is actually produced on the inside or, you know, on the plant. And if you are lucky, you will see this. A lot of times we don't necessarily see this or we don't necessarily pay attention to it. From the sporophyte, you know, we can see this division out of the sporophyte. That is the upper part of the sporophyte. We call it a sporangium. In the sporangium, you get all these tiny little spores, these tiny little spores come out, they germinate, they start to form a little plant-like structure in it. The little plant-like structure starts to germinate, it starts to produce other material on the inside, it forms a little, almost, you know, too small to see little plant that we call, that produces the gametes, and then that 
germinates and produces the moss as we see it. So we have a difference between the gametophyte and the sporophyte. Now, question here is, which one lasts longer? You've all seen the gametophyte, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't see the sporophyte. So actually, it spends most of its life cycle on the gametophyte. If we look at seedless vascular plants, and these are things like ferns, what we see is we see that part of the fern that we always see, and that's the diploid part. That is the sporophyte. Okay? And if you look at the back of the leaf, you see these little things. We call them sori. And inside of those, you have these sporangia. And the sporangia produce little spores. And the sporangia, if you were to take one of these leaves and cut it open, it would look like that. And the little things on the inside are the spores. And the spores get released off. And when the spores get released off, they germinate into these tiny little plants that are almost invisible. The tiny little plant releases sperm cells or egg cells and it starts to grow and it turns into that. You get fertilization of the egg cell by the sperm cell and that starts to grow up and increase in size and you can see fertilized egg cells here and when that happens you get a plant that looks like this and out of that you get these little fiddleheads which turn into the diploid phase. So what we've got is we've got the haploid phase or the gametophyte as a very short segment of the life cycle of this plant. It normally spends its time in the sporophyte phase. We're going to look at the gymnosperms now. And we're going to start out the gymnosperms by looking at a pine tree. This is a typical example of a pine tree. When you look at it, the pine tree is diploid. And being diploid, it is the result of the seed germinating. At some time during its life cycle, it is going to produce gametes. This is the male gamete cone of a pine tree. This is the female gamete cone of a pine tree. The male gamete passes the pollen onto the female gamete that fertilizes the egg and out of that you get a fertilized cone. The fertilized cone is actually diploid in nature because we've got fertilization of this particular part. Here we have a mature pine cone. Inside of the mature pine cone you find the seeds. The seeds are either released as the pine cone matures or some pine cones actually require fire to burn them in order to be able to allow the seed out. We often find squirrels chew the seeds up. But the seed then begins the life cycle again as the seed germinates and it forms these itty bitty little pine trees and out of these itty bitty little pine trees we get these great big pine trees. So, this spends most of its time in the sporophyte phase, and the sporophyte is that which we see all the time. The gametophyte, how long does this last? Um, you've all parked your car under a tree in beginning of the springtime, and it comes out yellow. That is due to pine pollen and other pollens. That phase normally lasts a month or two. Age of the tree? Oh, this tree here is at least 20 years old. I planted it. And I watched it grow. And that's, you know, that's over a 20-year time period. How long will it last? Oh, some of these trees last hundreds of years. So, we can see that in the sporophyte phase, it can last a much longer time. In the gametophyte phase, it's going to last a month or two. Angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. So flowering plants, again, you know, we view flowering plants. This happens to be, this example happens to be with a cactus. And how old does a cactus like that live? Oh, this one looked like it was quite old. You know, they can stay around for a long period of time. The cactus produces flowers. 
out of flower buds. You see the flower buds here. The flower buds open up into the little cactus. These are the gametophyte parts. This is going to put, produce the gametes on the inside of this cactus flower, which is very pretty. What you see is you see the female part in the dead center, and around the outside you've got all the pollen, the anthers that are producing the pollen and that's the haploid phase and the next thing you know is the pollen is transferred over and you get fertilization and once you get fertilization then you start to get fruit formation and fruit formation at this point again is diploid. How long does it go through the diploid phase? Years. How long does it take to go through the haploid phase? Uh, each flower is a couple of weeks tops whereas the plant may be doing that all summer long but each flower is just a couple of weeks in the end you can see the fruit increasing in size and growing and everything and eventually you can open it up and on the inside these are actually edible and they're quite tasty they're eaten in a lot of different areas of the world the only thing you have to make sure is that you get it well peeled so you can see the difference between the sporophytes and the gametophytes the gametophytes produce the gametes with the exception of the non-vascular plants, the sporophyte is the dominant phase, and the gametophyte is very quick. With the non-vascular plants, the gametophyte is the dominant phase, and the sporophyte is quick.